closing arguments today in the trial of a man accused of murdering a cathedral Catholic high school teacher. The man who interrupted last night's State of the Union speech has a connection to San Diego. I'm Shana Handy with more on that and the local congressman defending his actions. So who's the GOAT? Well, it's not me, but these little guys are the greatest of all time at brush management. You're going to see them in action coming up. Before you take off for spring break, there are some unwritten rules when flying on a plane. And we take you inside the Rosenbox Project. It's Women's History Month, which means it's the female choreographer's turn to take over. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. The case is now in the hands of the jury to decide whether a teacher at Cathedral Catholic High School was murdered or killed in self-defense. Good evening, I'm Marcella Lee. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Closing arguments in the case wrapped up this afternoon. As CBS 8's David Goffertson reports, the defendant faces life in prison without parole if convicted of murdering his ex-girlfriend's fiance in North Park. The defendant stayed on Kansas Street for almost an hour waiting for him with his loaded gun ready to kill him. Lying in wait outside the victim's apartment is the special circumstance that makes Jesse Alvarez eligible for life in prison without parole. But the jury has to find him guilty of premeditated first-degree murder for that to happen. The defendant shot Mr. Fierro six times. In the back, in the arm, and four times in the head, two in the front, and two in the back. In closing arguments, prosecutor Ramona McCarthy said the motive for the killing was jealousy. The victim, Cathedral Catholic High School teacher Mario Fierro, was engaged to the defendant's ex-girlfriend, Amy Gambara. What words did he use? What words came out of his mouth? I felt angry. I was brewing anger. His words. Defense attorney Peter Blair pointed out there was a witness in a car who saw the two men fighting before hearing gunshots. Premeditation, lying in wait, is not getting into a fight and holding a gun at someone's head while you're being punched, necessarily. Blair argued the shooting was in self-defense after the teacher attacked his client. Mario's knees were injured. They were scraped. It's very hard to scrape your knees unless you're really, really moving on the ground fast. That's consistent with him being on top of Jesse. But prosecutors point out it was Alvarez who was carrying a loaded gun, and some of the most damning evidence against him were his own Google searches, how to kill your ex's fiance, and how to kill someone with a handgun. He did not go there to talk to him and to wish Mr. Fierro and Ms. Gabara a happy future together. He went there to murder him. That's what all of the evidence points to. The jury deliberated for about two hours this afternoon. Now they have gone home for the weekend and they will reconvene on Monday morning. At the downtown courthouse, David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria will face SDPD officer Larry Turner in the November election. A lawsuit challenging Turner's residency has been dropped. According to the plaintiff's attorney, the woman who filed the lawsuit is dropping it because she and her family have been threatened and harassed. Turner maintains he was a San Diego resident when he filed papers to run for mayor. He's blaming dirty politics by the mayor's office, something the plaintiff's attorney and the mayor have both denied. A miles-long oil slick is floating off the coast of Huntington Beach right now. The Orange County Sheriff's Department first reported it last night. Now several state and local organizations are trying to get a handle on it as globs start to wash ashore. CBS 8's Jesse Begon is keeping track of this and has what we know right now. Jesse? Hey guys, the Coast Guard is now on top of this. Right now it's not clear where the oil is coming from, but officials don't think it's a natural leak. This is all happening near a couple of oil rigs almost three miles off the coast of Huntington Beach. The sheen on top of the water is about two and a half miles long as of this point. The Coast Guard is patrolling the area. They took a sample this morning and they're trying to minimize the environmental impact by using booms and materials that absorb the oil to keep it in place. Meantime, people on the beach today are coming across those globs of oil that were washing up on the sand. 
bunch of tar balls right down here on the water's edge on the north end of uh, the cliffs here in Huntington Beach, north end of uh, Dog Beach. Yeah, so there's some people telling us on the way on the way up, uh, they were warning us about all the tar, and we're like, oh, we can just check it out, I guess. Uh, we went down there and we did see like a few sp spots on the ground. Um, we tried to skip over it, but I mean, we could, as best as we could, but yeah. as you can see, the, yeah, <laughs> there's just a bunch of it. <laughs> Coast Guard officials say they're trying to they're actually reaching out to all the potential sources of oil in the area to try and find out where it's coming from. An oil response team is trying to collect the oil offshore and find out how it's impacted the area. So far, there haven't been any reports of any wildlife that's come into contact with it. No oil companies have claimed responsibility so far. Attorney General Rob Bonza says the California Department of Justice is also now investigating. Marcella. Thanks, Jesse. Rising sea levels because of climate change threaten our coastal communities. Encinitas says it is fighting back, building back their beach along the coast by bringing in sand and lots of it. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes joins us live. Kirsten, just how much sand are we talking about? 340,000 cubic yards of sand to be exact. I'm live here in Encinitas near the lifeguard tower on C Street. And I want you to take a look down here at my feet so you can see the problem. These rocks don't really provide for the best beach going experiences like other San Diego beaches where you can come and just lay out and enjoy the day. That's why the city of Encinitas says they're bringing in a lot of sand to just cover these rocks up. Did you guys know that they had to bring in sand in Encinitas? No, but I guess I never really thought where the sand came from. Honestly, <laughs> I had a feeling just because there are a lot of rocks here, like in the winter and whatnot, and then it always magically disappears, so I always kind of wondered. Harriet and Paul live near Encinitas, and they say they like the idea of the city bringing in sand. We pay so many taxes to live here. I think if it's going to go towards anything, you might as well go towards beaches that everybody can get out and enjoy with their families. I think the beaches are like the natural beauty of San Diego. It's the biggest draw, so I think we should be investing in our beaches. The project involves installing a 50 foot wide beach along 7,800 feet of shoreline. I know they want to um, avoid too much erosion in some spots, especially beautiful ones like this that people want to come and relax. And you know, I can't argue with that. I'm one of those people. I guess you just have to balance that out with the effects that it might have down current. Adam Debbie says he's excited about the opportunity to get to a sandier beach, but there's always consequences for human actions when we mess with Mother Nature. You have to know that nature's going to have its way, so you can buy some time. But again, what impact does that have on other communities further down? Allison Blackwell is the deputy mayor for the city of Encinitas, who says the project costs $43 million and only a little more than $1 million is coming directly from the city of Encinitas. The rest of the money comes from the state and federal government. Blackwell says the project reduces the force of waves that erode the shoreline and the bluffs. It is a bit of fight against nature and climate change, but we need to do our part to protect the shoreline. Uh, a lot is at stake there just for a healthy shoreline, uh, and it also helps the towns that are along the shore. Bigger picture, we need to look at why the oceans are rising globally and uh, work on reducing our impact on that. This is a live look at Encinitas right now. You know, the city of Solana Beach is working with the city of Encinitas on this project. The city of Solana Beach just did a similar project yesterday. Now it's here in Encinitas. And this is all part of a 50-year plan to bring and keep sand along our North County beaches. This project should be finished in June. Reporting for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Just in time for the summer. Thanks, Kirsten. Men and women dedicated to guiding kids in San Diego schools were honored today for their work. The fourth annual School Social Work Awards ceremony was held this afternoon, put on by the San Diego County Office of Education. Seven awards were handed out, including School Social Worker of the Year and a Trailblazer Award. Nominees come from schools across the county. Organizers say this is a moment to recognize the work school social workers do and raise awareness about the important position. Social workers are very humble people. They don't like to be recognized, and this is a reason why I put this event on, uh, because we are a service and we do things with humility. The awards coincide with National School Social Work Week. These hardworking goats were quite the spectacle today in Chula Vista as handlers move them across the road to a new grazing site for SDG&E. CBS 8's Brian White shows us their journey and how their natural talents are lending to wildfire prevention. The rush is on. These little ones have somewhere to be. 
They're moving toward greener pastures and have important work to do. <laughs> this herd of 220 brush clearing goats are used to create fire breaks around SDG&E's electric infrastructure. They clear four to 600 acres of vegetation a year. I tell you what, um, it's probably like their favorite salad and um, you know, this is something that they really are great at. Roland Franklin with SDG&E says these happy goats are specially equipped to do this job. Really what's special about their digestive system is, you know, it kind of kills off the seeds when they eat them. So opposed to like traditional uh, landscaping methods where we're mowing, um, that kind of just drops the seeds. Hilltop Drive became a goat crossing with the help of Chula Vista police as the herd moved toward their new grazing area. They heard the idea of goats crossing the field, crossing the road, and um, they're like, Mommy, let's, let's get out there and see what they do. SDG&E employee Allison Torres is also a mother, and she brought her two children to see this. You know, just giving them exposure to all different areas. You know, they, they learn so much in school, but to be able to get out here, get your feet, feet dirty, your hands dirty, roll up your sleeve, and just have a good time time with some goats this morning is really going to be um, a fond memory of theirs. A couple of new arrivals here over the past few days. These baby goats are a crowd favorite. The community really, really loves uh, coming out and learning about these goats and how they make an impact in the community, um, reducing the risk to wildfires and kind of seeing some cute goats. So it's a positive thing. In Chula Vista, Brian White, CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. Always an interesting sign. I love it, them running back and forth and doing good in the process. Totally. Helping us out. Still ahead, new information about the man who interrupted the State of the Union speech last night in his connection to San Diego. Plus, the fight for equality around the world on International Women's Day. Pretty quiet for tonight. No major shakeups in our forecast this weekend. Near seasonal temperatures, and you'll see more cloud cover by next week with a breeze picking up and slightly cooler. We'll look at all those details coming up. But first, airline etiquette, the unwritten rules if your spring break trip involves air travel. 